Amen. All right, amen. Let's go to uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 12, please. First Corinthians chapter 12, page 1149, if you're using one of the church Bibles. And we'll get there in just a moment. Last week, we talked about the house rules of the church of God, that one of the rules of our house is that we fight for each other. Amen? We fight for each other. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight for you. All right? We talked last week about how children, uh, children, as well as the children of God, know how to fight with each other. But we don't always know how to fight for each other. Amen? Amen. And so what we've been doing uh, last couple weeks and uh, for the next few weeks is we're going to sort of have like a family meeting here on Sundays and talk about some of the house rules of our family. We talk about uh, this in our family time to time. We have to kind of get everybody together and reestablish the, the rules of the house, right? And the rules of the house aren't always like burdensome rules, like make sure you put away your laundry. You know, make sure you put the dishes away after they're cleaning the dishwasher, right? I'm telling you what the burdensome rules are in my mind, okay? Uh, but, but also love each other and fight for one another. Those are uh, some of the rules of, of the house of God. And, and our church, this part of the church of God that gathers here in this building, because we don't just go to church, we what? We are the church, that's right. And, and so with our church growing and new faces and new people, uh, I think it's important for us to, to sort of look at what God wants from us. See, these aren't Living Faith Christian Church specific things. These are Christian Church specific things from the Bible. And last week we talked about our memory verse. And I'm sure all of you responded to my charge to memorize some verses last week as writing it down, texting them to yourself, posting on Facebook, and then work on it every day as you drove to work every day. And those of you that didn't do that, I'm sure right now you're going, oh, shoot, I forgot. Unfortunately, that's probably 90% of you. So, nevertheless, we will look at this verse again, and believe it or not, maybe we'll take it seriously that we'll go home this time and try to put this verse to memory. This is a good verse for us. Jesus said that a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have what? If you have love for one another. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And by this, all men will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so what we're talking about in these uh, different house rules is bigger than just these four walls. Because it's how we love each other that will give the world a testimony to the fact that we truly are the disciples of Jesus Christ. It's more than the sign out front. It's more that where a cross is in the building or the fact that there's a pinnacle at the roof of this building or something like that. It's about the people of God giving testimony by the way they love each other. It's one of the ways that we show we're disciples of Christ. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and so this morning, we're going to talk about the house rule, the house of God rule, that everyone is important. Everyone is important. Can you say that with me? Everyone is important. Why don't you look at a different neighbor than you looked at last time and say, everyone is important. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. And that's what we read here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You know, when, uh, when I was in high school, I was on the basketball team. And I thought you might laugh, so I brought photo evidence. This is, this is my varsity, varsity, senior basketball team. That's me right there. Not him. That's me. Here's a close-up, just in case you weren't sure. Right? This is me on the varsity basketball team. And for those of you that laugh and think, oh, that's pretty funny. Well, this was from a few weeks ago, and it's clear that I still got it, people. So <laughs> there's about an inch or so underneath my foot of air right there. About as big as that dot, that's about it. So 
when, when you play basketball, right, when you have what's called a pickup game of basketball, usually what you do is you have two uh, people that are going to be captains, and then those two captains get to pick their team. And there's, no, uh, there's nothing worse than being picked last. There's nothing worse than being picked last to play basketball because you know what that says? It means you're probably the worst one. Okay? Now, I was pretty much picked last on my basketball team in, in high school, right? I, I, you know, I didn't play much, but you know what? I was on the team, okay? And so what I did on the team was I would fool, this was my plan, I would fool the opposing teams by having the coolest looking sneakers <laughs> so that they would think I was their best player. And they would watch me in the layup line because clearly, if this kid is wearing things like this, these are yellow and violet sneakers for men. I can see you wearing something like this, Tommy. Tommy's coming back. He, he'd like this, right? And then, you know, then you get shoes like this. Look at these space-looking shoes here. Look at that thing here, right? Okay, so you can take out a second mortgage to buy these shoes if you'd like. But I would get the, the cool-looking sneakers thinking that that would help me be better. And really, it's about what's inside that counts, even in basketball, too. And so uh, to avoid anybody feeling bad, eventually, high school started to change the way that they would pick teams. And instead of having two captains and picking, you know what they would do? What would they say? they say, all right, everybody get in a line and count off. One, two, one, two, two. One, two. And so all the ones would go over here and all the twos would go over there. Now, if you were smart and sharp, you would quickly see who, like, the best player was. And then you'd be like, getting in the line, just right, two. And, and get, on, uh, get on the team that you wanted to be on that way. And uh, <laughs> it's not really like that in, in, in the family of God. Because in the family of God, as we'll read in First. Corinthians chapter 12, whether you're picked first or last, everybody on God's team is important. Everybody has different functions and different roles, but it's about being on the team that matters because in this sport called life, Jesus is the captain, and if he picks you, that's what matters. That's what matters. For those of you who have a problem with anything I've said so far, I'll meet you outside about 2 o'clock and we'll see if I pick you on my team or not. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, says, Just as we have many members in one body, and the members do not have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let each of us exercise them accordingly. Am I in Romans chapter 12? That's a great verse right there. Why didn't somebody say? That's good, too. That's good, too. First Corinthians, see, I didn't write down what page it was in my Bible. Okay. That's good. That's next week, maybe. All right, chapter 12 of First Corinthians. You guys were going with it, man. First Corinthians 12, verse 4. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same. Whew. Okay, we're in the right spot. We're on the same page now. There are varieties of ministries, but the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the what? For the common good. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy... And to another, the distinguishing of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, and to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he will. So what Paul is trying to deal with right now is he's trying to deal with the fact that the Holy Spirit works in a variety of different ways, but however the Spirit works through you or through me, it's the same Spirit at work. Now, many of us, are, that's not a problem. But the reason why this was a problem for the Corinthians church is because this church was a mess. 
Corinthian church, especially at the time of 1 Corinthians, faced so many problems that Paul needs to take time to write chapter after chapter to set them straight because they are just trying with all of their might to divide, to, to separate. It says earlier in the letter, Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and the same judgment. For I have been informed concerning my brethren by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you. Now I mean this, that each one of you is saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Peter, and I of Christ. So the church at the very beginning, this church in Corinth, was, was finding every opportunity that they could to divide. Some people divided by who it was that spoke the gospel to them first. Well, I came because Paul preached to me. And some people say, oh yeah, well, Peter preached to me. And then you had those holy rollers that were like, well, I follow Jesus himself right? Trying to one-up each other. And so here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, what they were doing is that they were elevating certain giftings of the Holy Spirit over other giftings. Primarily, there was an emphasis on speaking in tongues to the point that if you spoke in tongues and someone else didn't speak in tongues, you were holy and they weren't. You were the one that was spiritual. And if, if they don't speak in tongues, but instead they prophesy or they receive a word of knowledge you're something special and they're not and so paul is saying if you speak in tongues or you prophesy or you have a word of wisdom or healing it's all the same spirit so what are you doing making distinctions about it it's not about so much how the spirit manifests itself it's it's whether or not the spirit is at work but isn't it just like us to take something of god and mess it all up the answer to that is yes, people. You didn't say it loud enough. Okay. So the differences in the first century church were being used to divide. They were elevating certain people and other, certain things above others. And specifically, the thing that they would divide over were things that could be seen and obvious and things that were more private. Now, here's the thing. There are differences in the church. And the reason why there are differences in the way God works is for the purpose of diversity, not for division. So where there are differences in our church or in this church back then, it was so that there would be a diversity of the way God was working, not for the purpose of division. So the goal of the Christian church isn't all to be one thing and all be the same thing. It's to be who God is calling each of us to be. And when he calls each of us to do different things, that's not something that we should divide over. You know why? Because everyone is important. Everyone is important. And so in chapter 12, verse 12, he's going to use an, an analogy here of the human body to make this point. For even, verse 12, for even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though there are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So Paul is going to use the uh, illustration of the human body to talk about the church, right? We all have a body. Raise your hand if you have a body, okay? But your whole body is made up of a lot of different parts, right? You have lips, you have ears, you have eyes, you have toes, you have feet, you have knees, you have hips, right? You have all sorts of other stuff. Bill gave us the biology lesson in his testimony about all the contractions and stuff. And so he's going to use this, something that we all understand, to illustrate this truth. Verse 15. If the foot says, because I am not the hand, I am not part of the body... It is not for this reason any less part of the body. And if the ear says, because I'm not the eye, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less part of the body. For if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. 
The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, or again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. You see, what makes a complete body are all of the parts of the body working together. And we know that in our human body, right? If you've ever had something, uh, uh, especially maybe your foot or your leg fall asleep, right? It's sort of like a momentary rebellion of that part of your body saying, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not doing what you want, right? And it hurts and it tingles and you got to shake it, right? And and when that first happens to a child, they don't know what's happening, right? They freak out. It's like, my, my leg is not working. It just it, it fell asleep. It'll be all right, right? And then when they have a brain freeze, forget it. They don't know what to do, okay? I still get brain freezes because once ice cream's involved, I just don't know what to do with myself. But that's a different conversation. And so he's saying that our bodies are made up of, of many different members, but that's what makes us who we are. And he's trying to say that in light of the church, that there are different things that each one of us are called to do. There are different ways that God is going to work in your life and in my life. And our temptation sometimes is to think that because God is working in a certain way in your life and not in my life, that I must not be important. Or that God must not be working in my life if, if I don't see him in the same way that he's working in your life. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt, like hear testimonies and stories and go, man, why isn't God doing that? In my life, or maybe you see someone accomplish something for God and you think, man, I could never do that, right? Well, maybe it's not something you're supposed to do. Maybe God wants you to do something specifically for him based on who you are. That, in fact, is what God wants. He doesn't want us to all be the same. He made us different. Look at your neighbor and look at, just look for a minute and see how different they are to you. Thankfully, there's no twins here this morning, right? I mean... <laughs> I mean, we look different, we have different voices, we've got different sizes, we've got different shapes, we've got different colors, we've got different genders, and you know who made it like that? God did. That's how God created us. It says that he formed us in our mother's womb just to be exactly who we are, and so too often Christians, once we get saved, once we get filled with the Holy Spirit, think that we need to all fit and to be a certain kind of person when in fact God wants you to be you now transformed into being like Christ. And so what we can't do is say, because I'm not the hand, I must not be part of the body. Because if we were all just a big hand, that would be very strange. (laughs) Right? And, And so he says in verse 15 and 16, he says... I better go to the text because this isn't the memory verse. He says, if the foot says, because I'm not the hand, I'm not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less part of the body. And if the ear says, because I'm not the eye, I'm not part of the body, it is not for this reason any less part of the body. And so what Paul is addressing here is he's addressing first those who think they're not significant because they're not a, a different part of the body. Right? If the foot says... Well, I'm not the ear, right? The foot's looking at the ear thinking, man, it must be nice to be able to hear things and, and, and have sound and, and the mechanism of the eardrum, that's amazing. And I'm not the eardrum, so I must not be important. And that's what many of us do. We look at another part of the body and think, because I'm not that, I must not be important. And he says, no, we're supposed to be different. And so the first group he's speaking to is those who think they're not significant because they aren't somebody else. And then in verse 21, he says, and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. So in the first group, he's talking to people who think they're not significant because they're not somebody else. And then he's talking to a second group of people who think they're more significant than everybody else because they've got a certain job. And both of those things need to be destroyed out of the body of Christ. Those of us that think we're the significant ones because we have a certain function, especially publicly, and think we're better than other people, whoa. And those of us that think that we're not significant because we're not somebody else or serving in a different way, that's just as wrong. God has called us in our differences to make up altogether the body of Christ. And God has put you somewhere because he wants you there, and that's a big deal. Did you see that verse before? Did you see that verse? Let's look at that verse again. God, verse 18. But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as who desires. See, 
God puts you where you are and made you to be who you are because that's what he wants and needs for the body of Christ. And we spend so much time trying to be somebody else. All right? Some of us, some of us think that our part of the body of Christ is we're the appendix of the body of Christ. Right? You know what the appendix is to most of us? It's that part that you can live without, that doesn't have a function, and so we can live without it. I know that because I don't have one. Right? That's why I'm so good at basketball. <laughs> right? A lot of us think we're the appendix of the body of Christ. That's what we choose to be, right? Well, we don't really have a function and we could be live without, but none of us are the appendix. God has called each one of us, and each one of us is important to make up the whole. If you're not letting the, the Spirit lead your life, the rest of the body is missing out. And the glorification of God that he could and should be getting is not glorious because the whole body functioning together is really the goal. Everyone is important. Everyone is important. But uh, Pastor Charlie, could you come up here for a minute? And my wife and Joe. You mind? Okay. Now, look, everybody, most of us in this room have heard these verses before. And so me saying over and over again, we're all part of the body of Christ and you know, we all have a function, like we know those things, right? The first thing that we have to get right is we have to get our identity right. We have to believe that the Bible says that each of us are important, okay? And I'm, I'm praying that God will show us that today, that, that we are all important, okay? That's the first thing, that we get our identity in that. But, but I also want to strip down some of those areas in our life where we know these verses are true, but practically, we don't really believe it. And here's what I mean by that. You're in the wrong order. You're in the middle. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, Pastor Charlie has been called by God, right? Not of his own choosing, but called by God to go to India to be a missionary. He doesn't like the temperature. He doesn't like the food. He doesn't speak the language. There's no reason he should be going there if it not for the Lord. Amen? Yeah, okay. He goes and he sacrifices his time, his life, his money, his livelihood to go be a missionary in, a, in another country where people have, some people have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ. And that's a big deal, right? Now, Jessica Gluckin, December 1st, decided to leave the suburbia of Warwick to go to a rough neighborhood in North Kingstown. She picked up her family and chose because she wanted to speak the gospel to people who didn't know it and to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, she wanted to move to another part of the state to devote her life to be a local missionary. Now, we could look at what God has called Charlie to do and think that's a much bigger deal than what God has called Jess to do. But you know what? God has called Charlie to do what he needs to do and God is calling Jess to do what she needs to do. And both of these uh, brother and sister need to be honored, need to be prayed for, need to be uh, uh, acknowledged as an important part of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. But then we get to Joe. <laughs> okay? These are obviously sacrificial, big deal part of the body of Christ, right? Especially her. <laughs> but then Joe, right? Joe Testa, when we met with our fellowship coordinators uh, at the beginning of the year, said that one of his goals for this year was to speak the name of Jesus at his job. He's a CPA, he's an accountant in, in Providence, right? He works there full time and during tax season, he works there even fuller time. That's why we haven't seen him for so long and we forgot what he looked like, right? <laughs> Joe wants to go to work and be a missionary and speak, not just be nice, but he said specifically, I want to speak the name of Jesus in my office. This is just as important a member of the body of Christ than these brother and this sister, right? But, but perhaps our fleshly tendency is to think, no, this is where the action is, and this is just a different kind of member of the body of Christ. Or maybe we think, well, this is important, but ah, this is secondary. Each one of these people have been called by God and have been filled with the Holy Spirit to do His work because they're the body of Christ. Which one of these people is more important? That's not even an option in God's mind. They're all vital to this body because there are people in Providence who need the gospel. There are people in Kingstown and there are people in Adra Pradesh. Yeah. yeah. 
right? <laughs> Go have a seat. Thank you. Praise God. All right. I need Mike Philibert. I need Millie. Can you come up for a minute? I'll be short, I promise, right? This is fleshing out where this everybody's important thing uh, comes into play, right? Millie, you can stand right here. Mike, you can stand right here. Okay, turn around, face everybody else. Let's... This is tough right here. This is a lot. You have no idea what I'm going to do. This is trust. Okay? Mike, Mike often will send text messages to me encouraging me. He will text me, I was praying for you this morning. I woke up this morning and I felt a burden to pray for your family and I prayed for your family. You know how much that encourages me? He encourages me through the phone. All right? I don't ask for it. He just, when God inspires it, I know he does it to many of you as well, right? Millie, the other day, encouraged the heck out of Rose Testa. Rose was feeling down about her role in serving with the women, and Millie would have none of that. She said, Rose, are you kidding me? You're such a blessing to this church. You just, you're, you're changing lives. You are a great blessing, and God is working in you. We need you, Rose, okay? Brother here encourages through the phone. Millie encouraged in person, right? Now, the third person in this story is me, right? I encourage through the pulpit. Now, these two we may have judged as, okay, this is a similar function. But when we throw in the fact that one of this group here encourages from the pulpit, it's clear that I'm the most important member of this group, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely not. But in our heart and our mind, we may think that. We may think that if I'm not up on the pulpit, I can't encourage somebody in person, or I can't encourage them through the phone, but each one of us are doing the work that the body of Christ needs to do to encourage one another. So whether it's behind the pulpit or in person or on the phone, God, through the Holy Spirit, is working in each one of us. Amen? Amen. 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 Have a seat. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, it's easy for us to, to say, yes, we're all important, and yes, we're all the body of Christ, and wherever the Holy Spirit is working, that's great. But this is how we can kind of flesh it out. Because if we think we're not uh, sacrificially moving our family to go spread the gospel, you may think there's no role for you in your neighborhood. You may think that if you're not up here, you can't encourage somebody. But that's, that's saying that you're not an important part of the body of Christ. And Paul is writing to us in this familiar section of verses that all of us know already to smack down that kind of thinking in our head. We're all important. We're all important. Every person in this family is important, and that's a house rule. There aren't people in this family that are more important or more needed than others. No more than there's a certain part of your body that's more needed than the others. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's our identity. We each need to believe that we are a member of the body of Christ and important. And then the second part of this is taking action to treat each other as such. Verses 21, again, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of our body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to the member which lacks, so that there may be how much division in the body? No division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. And you are Christ's body and individually members of it. You see, everyone in this family is important, just like every member of your body is important. There's not a part of your body that you that 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 isn't vital and functioning to the whole purpose of of why you are created. And in fact, the things that we think are insignificant, we take a lot of time to make sure that they're taken care of, right? Right? We cover up those parts of the body that are sensitive and important. Right? We we care for those things uh, of ourselves and our physical body. And so what God wants us to do here, he says that the members of the body should care for one another. We should care for one another. You know what happens? Uh, uh, I, have, I have five fingers. I'm blessed to have five fingers. 
This finger is very important. You know why? Because <laughs> this is how you do thumbs up. This finger is very important. It's a pointer finger. How do you know what from the menu you're going to eat unless you point? I'm not going to get into this finger. This finger is very important, right? It's our ring finger. But you know what finger isn't important? Pinky. This isn't an important, in my mind, right? This isn't an important uh, thing, right? But you know what happens if I'm using a hammer and this seemingly uh, non-important member of my hand gets hit with a hammer? You know what happens? It suddenly feels very important to me. And you know what happens when this seemingly insignificant member of my body gets hurt? You know what happens? You know what I do? If it goes bam, I do this. I take these other members, which seem to be more important, and they come and they comfort that one member. That's what we're supposed to be for each other. When one member hurts, we come and we comfort it. Because it's not just an isolated thing, it's part of the body of Christ. And this finger's important, this finger's important, and this finger's important, this finger's important, and this finger's important because it makes up my hand, which is attached to my arm, which makes me my whole self. My whole self. Each part of my body is important. So he tells us that we should care for each other as such. You see that? Each member, when one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it uh, there for this morning. I'll just close with this final thought. We live in a world that is very partisan. The climate of our country in particular right now is very partisan. What I mean by that is we are constantly, we, this nation and, and humanity in general, are looking for ways to identify ourselves as different and unique from others, right? To lift ourselves up over others, to, to be on top of others. We're better. Everyone else is. We love putting labels on people. Well, are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you uh, an American? Are you a foreigner? Are you a citizen? Are you an immigrant? Are you a man? Are you a woman? Well, are you married or are you single? Well, do you have kids or do you not have kids? Are you old? Are you young? Do you collect Social Security yet? Have you even paid into Social Security yet? What, what's your gender? What's your nationality? What's your ethnicity? What's your race? We are in a world that is pushing this partisanship on us. This isn't a political statement. This is a human condition. This is what we do. And so if we are not careful, we will bring that into the body of Christ, where some people who do one thing are different or better, and other people who do another thing are not as important or insignificant. And what Paul is spending a lot of ink in the Holy Scriptures to tell us is that every one of us is important, that no matter where you have come from or what you're bringing to the table, God wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit so that you can do His work. And the work that He wants to do through you is just as important as the work he wants to do through me and your neighbor. And I, I pray we can believe that today. Because I don't want to buy into the partisanship and bring that here into our church, where we separate each other and we divide. The early church had to be convinced that they were one united family because of the diversity of backgrounds that they all brought in. And the modern church needs convincing not to split apart because of the reasons that we have created. Galatians 3 says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free man. There's neither male nor female. That's a huge statement he just said. That when we come on and we join this team, there's an equal footing. It's about having faith in Christ, being filled with the Spirit, and then we become all one in Christ Jesus to be His body. You are important. The body of Christ needs you because you are, you are a unique member of the body of Christ, and without you, we're not whole. So I'd like to pray this morning in light of these words. If you close your eyes for a minute. We're going to pray about our identity as the body of Christ. So, 
What I'd like you to pray is I'd like you to ask God the following. God, help me to believe that I am an important part of the body of Christ. Help me believe that I am an important part of the body of Christ. Just ask God to work in your heart that you are important to him. Now ask him to help you believe that your brothers and sisters are important as well. God, help me to believe that my brothers and sisters are important as well. And now we'll pray in light of taking action this message. God, is there someone that I need to reach out to today in light of this message? Is there something you want me to do in response? Will you ask God that right now? Each of you, he's your father. He knows what you have to offer. And just ask him if someone that he wants you to reach out to today or something he wants you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling us important. Help us to believe that each other are important. And help us each to reach out and be the hands and feet or ears or lips or heart or shoulder or whatever of Jesus today. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.